Hey, it's Ben, and this is Drambo by Beba Street. Specifically, it's Drambo version 1.5, um, which means the new update is finally here. It's been a long time coming, um, but I think everyone will find that it is worth it. Um, I'd say this just transforms what was already a really fun and powerful app into more of a complete music production environment. Um, so the focus is still on like modular synthesis and um, creating instruments and effects um, and the groove box aspect. So it's, it's like a performance instrument, um, but it, it's also a, more of a DAW now. So it, it has um, like auto step entry where you can uh, tap in a sequence and makes things really quick has a, like, like an enhanced um, sequence editors and navigation and just lots of like user interface um, enhancements. Has a piano roll, um, which is a lot like other piano rolls, but it, it's just, it's very nice to use. Some other cool step editors so you can very quickly access velocity, gate length, offset, and some other parameters. Has automation editors, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, you can quickly just go back and forth between keys and pads and you can set a scale on your pad and a key. Um, and then possibly most exciting to some people has a clip launcher now, um, that you can use for either like song mode or just regular old, regular old clip launching. Anyways, it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of changes. So I'm going to just kind of show a jam and demonstrate some of the new features in this video. And then I'll do some more in-depth focused videos. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people are going to make demos and tutorials as well. Um, but I, I think everyone is going to be pretty happy with what's here. Now, if you are new to Drambo, um, I'll give you the very quick orientation. Um, it's a modular groove box, and the modular part means that you you kind of just start with an empty sandbox, and you can fill each track um, with whatever you want, and you can get really in-depth. There's a hundred-some modules. Um, if you're looking at this, like, what is a generator? What's a processor? What's a modulator? Um, I think everyone should explore this part of Drambo, but if you just want to use this as a host, as a sequencer, as a DAW for your other apps, you can also do that. Um, but you have to know how to add something to your rack first. So to add anything, you tap the plus button. And if you want to add an instrument, it's going to be under the generator category. Um, you can just browse through all of your instruments here. If you want to add an effect, it's under processor. And, and just to show you how... Um, relatively straightforward i think the modular part of drambo can be and i think simple that it can be um, i'm just going to make a, a basic um, subtractive patch so i'll go to my adder i'm going to turn the pin on that like keeps the adder open so you can keep adding uh, modules um, basic patch would be an oscillator um, under processor we would want a vca and it's going to connect automatically. So now the oscillator has been stopped by the, the amp envelope. And then we're going to add a filter. And we might as well add some modulation too, like an LFO and an envelope. So if I open up my, uh, my filter, what am I? So all the connections are made automatically. If I want to add modulation sources, I tap on a parameter that has a little triangle next to it and then pick the outputs of the modules that I want. And everything is reroutable. But it's very it's not as hard as it seems to some people. I think there's no wires to worry about. And some for some people that's tough because you have to get used to this different way of like seeing connections with these icons. Um, and it's a left to right flow. But um, I think it's worth getting to know, but that's not the point of this video. Um, so it, if you don't really care about modular or you don't want to learn right now, or you're taking your time learning, 
um, you can still use all of your other apps in here and just use it as a, as a dot. So the little jam I have here, it has a Xeon playing the chords, Rui's Maker um, by Brambos playing drums, and then super simple, like an FM operator module from Drambo that's playing the, the bass part. Um, it, that's all that's here. And I'm just gonna mess around with it a little bit and talk about some of the features. So, um, first new thing, like performance is just really quick now. I can mute a track just by swiping up or down here. Down for mute. Um, when I solo it, it cuts out my uh, my voice, which is on eight. So, have that by a solo. Okay, and then um, if you like mute everything quickly, hold mute or hold undo and then tap mute, and it undoes like, all of your mutes and solos. Um, so performance is just, it's really fun. Um, this area here, this is the scene crossfader, and you, what this lets you do is set a, you have 16 like banks of parameter settings. And you just change your parameters based on this fader. So it's kind of like a macro, basically. But it's active across every track. So again, it's like a performance feature. Okay. The launcher might want to hear something different. You just tap to change the sequence. Now say you want to copy a sequence, you just hold and drag, dump it somewhere else. You can sync it to a bar. And then down here is the step editor. Um, and it'll kind of move around. This whole area is going to move around based on what else you have. Um, but you can always find it. Um, now, automation. Okay. Tap record. Start twiddling knobs. That's automation. It's really easy. Now, if you want to edit that automation, go to your automation editor. Now, I can see visually what my automation is. I can also like manually add automation here. Just tap the plus. I want to modulate my bit redux. Um, it's kind of cool. They give you a couple different ways to edit that automation. So you can have like a bar. You can do this like saw wave kind of thing. Just lines. If you want to get rid of your automation, you just tap the parameter, delete or clear. Um, and this kind of drawler menu, this is also there for um, the graphic shaper, graphic envelope, and graphic modulator. So that's cool. I guess we should talk about recording. Um, you know, I, I already had some stuff entered in to the sequence. Um, so recording is it's just a little bit better now um, in that you get auto grow um, for your length. So I have... Um, it's a one bar pattern and previously if I recorded it would just it would it would be one bar and it would overdub so I'd have to know how long I wanted to record for you now have auto grow um, make sure I have it turned on so you don't have to have it on but this will basically just the clip length will keep growing until you stop the recording or you stop it from growing and then it loops back so it uh, just allows you to be a little bit more spontaneous. It works like this. You hit record. You're going to hit play. We'll hear it count in. And it's going to wait. It's going to listen for me to start playing something so I can, you know, catch a groove, as it were. And you're going to see it, like, it grew to four and it was red that means it's going to keep growing 
So if I want to stop it from growing and keep recording, I just tap it in this nav bar area. That turns off auto grow and it's still recording. Well, I don't want to record anymore. Um, and then once you have like a sequence that's already there, it's not going to auto grow that unless you tell it to. And you just tap into the nav bar. And can this be mini mapped? Yes, it can. Um, so mini mapping. Um, this isn't a new feature, but pretty much everything in Drambo is MIDI mappable. Um, you just tap this button, and then uh, you map whatever you want. But that's auto grow. And then again, this is the nav bar, so you can like focus in on different parts of your sequence very quickly um, here, and you can like you can crop to your selection. You can clear just that part. You can copy a selection and then paste it somewhere else. Just makes it really easy to work with, especially longer sequences. Okay, um, go back to the launcher for a second. Now if I have like a nice little like group of clips playing that I like, I can click duplicate instead of new, and it's gonna like create a new pattern based off what I have playing. Um, so you can kind of play around with different combinations and then get something nice. Another thing that you can do in the clip launcher, there's so many new things. Um, so in the previous Drambo, there's something called the, uh, do something real quick here. The P locks, which is like a, a step lock. Okay, so that's where you hold a step, change a parameter. Easy to just create kind of interesting changes. You can now do that for a whole um, clip. So it's kind of like the more function where you can set a bunch of different parameters and quickly switch between them, but it's for one track. And you're not morphing, you're just switching. Um, but I, I think that's really a lot of fun. Again, it's like another performance feature. Um, what else? The piano roll? I'll focus more on this, but it's a nice piano roll. Um, and then these editors, this just gives you better access to, especially some of the step components. So it's not just a, like, it's not just the notes, it's different kind of ways of dealing with the notes or the steps that you added. So we could change the probability of some of these. It's gonna play like 50% of the time. Maybe we're gonna retrig some of these, get ratcheting. And maybe I wanna, I'll make a new clip here. If I just wanna quickly add some 16th notes, I can do that. Find what, uh... And it's going to play, like, when you tap a note, it's going to enter in the last note that you played on the step sequencer or the last chord. So now it's going to play a chord, and I'm not holding down anymore. It's just going to remember what I played. But, uh, what's really nice, you tap this button, and then you just draw it in. So for like drums and 16th notes, that's really nice. Okay, um, if I wanted to record this, I can use the stems recorder. Um, so I turn this on. If I don't do anything else, it's going to arm the master. And I can just hit play. And I can jam. It's also going to be recording my voice, I guess, because my voice is on track 8. Um, and I, I do whatever I want to do. I can capture my morphing, capture changes in my clips. If I was actually playing in a live instrument or, again, my voice, it's going to record that. Um, and it's going to say it's saving to um, a folder. Now, you can also record stems of any track. And you, you do that by arming the recorder part here. 
Um, so if I actually want to record individual tracks and then send it to another DAW and do my mixing and mastering there, um, that's an option now. So hit play, it'll record it. And it's going to go here under files, samples, recordings. And then uh, if you've named your project, it's going to record to that project. This is Drambo Quick 2. And if you haven't named it, it's still going to save it somewhere. It just gives it a name based off the date. Um, other new features that we can spend a little bit more time on in some other videos. But uh, there is a new way of doing modulation. It is called Morph. So it's under the modulator section. And it, it basically acts like a uh, one-off morph pad down here. So you hit assign, you change a parameter, and then it morphs between like the default state that you've set, whatever that is, and you can still change it, and your assigned version. And this is modulatable. So you can just very quickly set up like precise modulations that you you want. Like I, I want it to go up to here. Well, you can do that now. And um, you're also gonna notice things are a little bit more visual now with modulations and P locks and um, automation. You can see all those changes happening um, now. Let's get rid of this. So that's one very big change. And also pretty cool for the synthesis stuff. Um, previously the maximum number of voices was eight on a track and you could have like various different modules that are using different groupings of voices, but it was eight voices of polyphony, like in any one stream of modules. Um, that might not be the best way to say it. Well, anyways, now it's 16. So, um, just more voices is more fun. And, uh, that is also the same for unison. So you can just get huge sounds now. So like FM unison sounds really crazy, but it sounds really cool. Um, so those are two other really big changes. Um, I think that pretty much covers like the most of it. You heard a cheesy jam, but it wasn't too cheesy. So I'm, I'm happy with that. At least it didn't sound as cheesy as some of the other stuff I've done. Um, but uh, I think people are really going to like this. I hope you have fun playing with the new Drambo. If you have questions, um, maybe hang tight for some other videos that are going to that are gonna surface for me and other people. But um, definitely ask questions um, if you have them. Also, be sure to visit Beep Street, the forum. There's a lot of nice, smart fun people there who are happy to just talk about Trambo and answer questions. Um, and also don't forget patchstorage.com. And that is patchstorage.com, which is this great website that hosts uh, collections of basically presets or projects or whatever um, for a lot of different platforms. Um, but there's 409 presets or racks that you can download for patch storage now and people keep adding them um, and these are just they're free um, so again it, you don't have to be someone who knows a lot about modular right now um, whether you want to learn and you're going to download some racks from other people so that you can learn um, or you're just not interested in learning that's fine too but there's a lot of really cool stuff here um, anyways I, I really I'm just excited for people to see this. Um, have fun.